Welcome to Minority Focus. I'm your host, Jimmy Moore. We've got um, a number of things that go on in Paducah for the benefit of others. And some people choose to be a part of that by volunteering to, um, to do services at hospitals, one of them being Lourdes. And with us today is the Human Resources Generalist, Martha Agote. Agote, Agote? Yes. Got it right. How are you? Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming. It's one of those cases where you have somebody come on the show and they say, sure, instantly. You don't have to bribe them, beg, none of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you came. Resource generalist. I I've not heard that, that title before. Generalist? We're a jack of all trades. <laughs> we do it all. Is that what it means, really, really general? Yes, we um, have a lot to do with bringing candidates into the hospital. We do the screenings of applications and interviews. We do um, all the benefits for our associates, family medical leaves, tuition reimbursements. Um, whenever associates need that person to talk to, if they're having any issues, we're that person for them. Mm -hmm. We're the liaison with all the leadership. So we help guide them and train all new associates. We do the new associate orientation. So we do a lot. Wow, okay. <laughs> all the activities that go on in the hospital, you know, Is all the fun right? stuff. Well, We're behind well, all of that. fantastic. And you're, you're like the head honcho of all of that? No, I'm just one of the many people that do all of that. Okay, well, see, they told me you knew everything. No, they said you thought you knew everything. <laughs> 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 As long as people <laughs> think that I know it all, then we're good. <laughs> One of the areas in particular that I was wanting to talk with you about was uh, the volunteer program that people um, do there. Yes. Is it covered? Are there enough people volunteering to do things? Well, currently we have 164 active members in our auxiliary program. Um, so that's a big amount of people helping every day. In 2010, that was over 64,000 hours that they gave to our facility and to all the people that came into our facility. Wow, and, this, and this, this is no cajoling, no advertising, anything of the sort. No. Just people coming saying they want to work. A lot of people are retired, homemakers, um, just people wanting to give their time and talent. And that's, that's uh, the more responsible way, I think, to give of your time is in an area of volunteer uh, people. The one area that I know anything about, really, is uh, outpatient uh, registration, where people first come in um, to the hospital. What do those people do? What are their actual duties? Well, a lot of our volunteers cover, um, well, there are 16 departments that they cover, first of all. But a lot of the volunteers are the first faces of our facility. So at all the information desks at Lewards, who do they see? It's a volunteer. When they go to register, who helps them? It's a volunteer. When they get transported from registration to say outpatient surgery or the surgery you know, areas, it's a volunteer that transports them. So a lot of time that volunteer is that contact with the patient coming in or the family members. Right. Um, again, it, throughout those 16 departments, there's radiology, the lab, human resources. We have information, information management, health information management. We have information systems. There's just an array of different departments that they help us throughout. You know, the women's center. Mm -hmm. We have two medical pavilions, and they also help at the medical pavilions. We have a hospice program, and they help in the office of hospice. So our volunteers are so diverse in their talents. You know, they can help from transporting a patient to helping in security. They, I mean, just seeing them throughout the facility, they're a great help. You know, a lot of patients or family members are lost. You know, a hospital tends to be a scary big place. Sure. So they can help them find their way, answer questions. You know, when they call in, if they come into the hospital not knowing what room a family member's in. Right, it's all covered. Other than, other than in the, in the particular areas, um, surgeries, that sort of thing, other than that, volunteers are in every facet of what goes on in the hospital in some form or fashion, would you say? 
Yes, pretty much so. Um, they help with, we have a program called pastoral care. And in pastoral care, we have Eucharistic ministers that the volunteers help and they run that program as well as the befrienders. Eucharistic ministers take communion to our patients in their rooms and the befrienders are a one-on-one -on -one when a patient comes in. Every patient that comes into our facility is visited by one of our volunteers that's a befriender. They sit with them, they can pray with them, they can hold their hands, they can just talk to them. I mean, whatever that person's needing at that moment. So, I mean, they, they touch many lives. Our volunteers are fabulous. Um, in, in, in the area of, um, of hospice care, especially since it involves um, an impending demise in a lot of cases, are particular skills or training required, since that's such a, a, a touchy area? I mean, I think what I'm saying is, is, is the staff that you use to bring people into the different areas they work, do you know that they're particularly skilled in checking a person out? Yes. And knowing that they belong where they, where they yeah. want to work. And a lot of that, um, our coordinators, we have a coordinator of our volunteers, and she pretty much does an interview skill assessment, because everyone does have different talents and skills and personality traits. So they might want to be in a particular area, but you also have to go over with them what the skill set is for that area. We have someone that is over the hospice volunteers and they go through a more extensive background check, they That's go through I'm orientation. Saying. So a lot more is entailed with the volunteers that go out to the homes of our patients. Right, and they have a, um, a better working understanding of what an individual might be going through. Exactly. At that um, particular time. Are they in communication with the families of those people? Do they, do they talk with them too? Do they? Yes. Have that same association. With the hospice volunteers that go out to the homes, they, they are trained specifically to deal with the family members as well as any end of life situations that they're you know, gonna be faced with when they go out to the homes. Okay, that's, that's an, I, I, I didn't understand. I didn't know that, that they actually worked outside the hospital, that they could physically go to the homes of the people that they're, yes. that they're dealing with and not just those there under the hospice care no. of um, the hospital itself. As in any job situation I know, uh, and I think often about um, the police department and, and, and people in positions of authority and power and what have you, that um, uh, sometimes you shouldn't give that position to someone who doesn't deserve it. Every policeman doesn't need to carry a gun. Everybody who can tell somebody what to do doesn't need to be in that position. Do you often find cases where um, someone isn't quite up to snuff, or up to par for what they volunteer to do? Since they volunteer, you don't literally fire them. <laughs> uh, how, how do no. you know? um, We're grateful for our volunteers. I mean, to give of your time with nothing in return, but you know, they, they give without expecting anything. So we're not the type to say, no, you can't volunteer necessarily. I mean, whether they are right for the department or right for a particular task may be different. And a lot of that, um, we're blessed with the volunteers that we have, that we're, we haven't run into any problems like that. But there's a lot of expectations too. I mean, everyone that volunteers has to go through an orientation. So they spend a full day learning and understanding what Lourdes stands for, what our mission is, what our core values are, and what is expected of them as a volunteer. Right. Not, not, not questioning your, your capabilities, your abilities, but how did you get to be where you are? Is there anything particular that you had to study in the area you had to work in before you could get to the position that you're in right now? In human resources? Yes. Fascinating thing about human resources is you don't necessarily need a certain degree 
in human resources. You can have a degree in business, you can have a degree in communications. It's more of the skill set that a person possesses. Um, a skill can be taught or trained in a certain way, but a personality cannot be changed. Sure. So a lot of it, because we're working with people and situations that are uncomfortable at times and difficult, it's more of the personality that the person has and how well they handle the situations that they can be faced with. Mm -hmm. That's more important than their education. Mm -hmm. Patient comes in um, to be taken to a particular area or what have you, and uh, I'm a volunteer to take them there, and that patient gives me a royal cussing. How, how would you have a volunteer to handle that? Because there's always somebody that's, anytime there's, th there's a job that you do that's of servitude, uh, you're going to have that person that has no appreciation for that fact at all. And they'll give you a really rough time. You tell your volunteers, go ahead and... No, unfortunately <laughs> we cannot. But being that we are a Catholic organization with Jesus Christ in our forefront, we want everyone to live by our mission and try and live by the example of Jesus Christ. And a lot of times we will run into patients, even of family members that are not in the best of moods, but there's always a story behind that. And it could be the anxiety, the fear of the situation that they're in that leads them come out in a negative manner. So whether it's a volunteer or one of our associates, we have to put ourselves in that person's shoes and understand where they're coming from. Exactly. So rather than giving them a left hook, we try and <laughs> smile and hopefully help them, you know, calm down their fears and help them understand that we're there to serve them and help them For in sure. any way possible. Thought came to me a few years ago, if when someone does something to anger you, if you can first think of why they're doing that, which you just mentioned about whatever the situation may be, you're accomplishing two things. And one, in thinking about why they're doing what they're doing, you're taking away from what you think, what you feel, how you've been made to feel, and getting in touch with them, and you're dissipating whatever pain you might have suffered because you're not dwelling on it. That takes special people, though, and I know that, that you desire to have those kinds of special people. And we have a lot of those special people in our facility. I'm sure. Uh, I've, been over, I've been there, and uh, I've not encountered anyone that's not the caliber you, you speak of. And I, and I meet a number of people there. I, do, I volunteer at least. Thank you. Um, that don't hesitate to speak of, of, of spirituality, of, of Christ, of God. I, I, I've even noted that from time to time, particularly in the mornings. Uh, at a certain time, there's prayer over the intercoms for the yes. entire... every morning and every evening. We start our day and end our day with prayer over the loudspeakers. Our um, chaplains do that every day for us. You had none of them atheists come up there knocking on the president's door telling them they don't want to hear it. What? <laughs> Somebody's bound to protest that. Um, and we're respectful of everyone. I mean, that's one of the things, whether... Um, a cross in a patient's room might be offensive to them, we take that into account. So we're open to listening to anyone's comments and concerns and suggestions. Right, one would think that, you know, with, with their health in mind, if, if I'm going to have a surgery, a life-saving surgery, or a health-bettering service, I don't care what you got in there. You can have statue boot or whatever, but some people don't like that, and, and, they, and they take a particular concern about what's exhibited as, um, religious, uh, spiritual, what have you. But that's front and foremost in the program that you... It is at Lourdes because we are a Catholic organization and again our mission is to extend the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. So we start our day that way and we end every evening that way. All right. When those, um, those vol the, vol the people that volunteer um, don't have a set number of hours that they're going to work. They work certain days and then, and then do they have to put in so many hours or? Actually, you're bringing up good points. Um, in order for a volunteer to remain active member, they must work 100 hours throughout the calendar year. Most of our volunteers work four hour shifts and it's strictly Monday through Friday, but it's up to them to decide what hours. Eight to noon might not be convenient if they're working in outpatient registration. They might come in at 5.30 or 6 in the morning. 
because that's when that department starts opening. But it's usually four hour shifts and they can volunteer as many or as little days as they want as long as they do 100 hours per calendar year. See, if, if it happens that a person doesn't reach that, that number of hours and that you do they start over or are they terminated or? Well, they're inactive. Again, because they're not employed, we don't you know necessarily terminate them or anything. They're inactive. A lot of people just come to this area during certain months of the year, so they might not complete their 100 hours, but they can reactivate their status at any point that they wish. Um, in certain circumstances, there might be um, something to happen that requires a professional there in, in, in the hospital. If that, if that instant is so spontaneous, if a volunteer were to render a professional type of CPR or whatever, is there any liable liability? They're not allowed to. Um, we leave all the medical stuff to the clinicians. So they're never in a position where they're by themselves with a patient and would have to. There's always protocols in the hospital and teams that respond to emergencies. Are there, are there um, say in the area of, of, of CPR, are there training programs for volunteers where they can learn to do those things? Yes. And to be authorized to render that kind of a service? Yes, necessary? we do offer basic life support training, um, which goes over first aid and CPR for infant, children, and adults. Okay. So uh -huh. anyone would be eligible to take one of those courses. Right. You, you got anything for brain surgery? You know, I'd <laughs> like to be able <laughs> What would you like to be when you grow up? <laughs> I always said a, a pilot or a postman. It's strange. And, and I'd, I'd often thought, Doctor, I find the human body terribly interesting. Would love one day to see one opened with all the parts alive and working. And there, so anything like it, come up, let me know. I know come <laughs> up the stairs. Certainly. And, yeah, I know there's a lot of things that um, that people do uh, on a volunteer basis over there. They help a lot of people. They help a lot of people. Yes, I, um, I must tell you that again, we are extremely blessed at Lourdes with the volunteers that we have. Um, besides all the hours that they put in, they do wonderful projects. They do annual yard sales. They do various fundraisers to. Everything that they raise comes back to the organization or the community. Right. They do jewelry sales, book sales. Um, right now they are starting this month actually, they're starting a program called Beads of Courage. And we're piloting the program at Lourdes and they're in charge of that program which is for cancer survivors. And it's a necklace that they wear and a different color bead demonstrates the different milestone that they've gone through in their cancer journey. Mm -hmm. So they're helping with that. And in December, they're having their annual Tree of Light ceremony. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be an open house for that. And what happens is different departments adopt a tree and decorate it, mm -hmm. and then it's raffled off. Mm -hmm. So people can win these trees. And there's mm -hmm. gonna be an open house so people can come and have a booth if they have a specialty that they'd like to sell. Mm -hmm and we'll have various vendors, giveaways, prizes, refreshments, displaying all the trees that are decorated. And then all the money that's raised goes to the Women's Center as well as Adopt a Family program that we have at Lourdes. Right. Let me write down here when that giveaway is. What are <laughs> <laughs> sort of all there? It's, um, it's a wonderful program. I, you know, um, I, I've learned and I've come to accept that Life is not about you, uh, me. It's not about me. It's not. No, it's about. I was what told I can that life's honest. about Jimmy Moore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you got me. <laughs> no, I, I, I know that it's about what you, what one can be to others, mm -hmm. and for others, and, and and I don't think there's a a better feeling I've ever had in my life than to than to be able to do that. Um, uh, in the way that I do the volunteer work over there, a, a laugh is everything, a, a smile is everything, you know, in, in, in the front of um, uncertainty and, 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 and pain and, and the problems of being ill, of being old, you know, of all those things. If, if there's a laugh, then, then for that moment, um, 
all of that steps to the side. Very true. And, and you can enjoy a part of life. It's got to be a very fulfilling thing that you do um, every day. I would imagine you get a lot of, talking about job satisfaction, that's what it's all about and well, doing things. I will tell you, when I walk the hallways at Lourdes and I see a volunteer, they bring a smile to my face. And if they do that to me, just imagine how many people they do that to every day. Right. And I, we are fortunate that we have a good number of, you know, male and female ratio. Before, the volunteers had a nickname, Pink Ladies, because they wear pink <laughs> smocks, and it was mostly females. But we are currently at a point where we have 77 males out of 164, so the men are catching up and getting on the program of giving back. Okay. Um, and it's just wonderful because the men have taken over the shuttle program that we offer. Mm -hmm. They run that, organize it, schedule it all on their own, yeah. and they're able to offer people rides to you know, the hospital from their vehicles mm -hmm. and back and forth, yeah. Monday through Friday during the day hours. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just that alone immediately puts people more at ease, people that aren't using walkers or an oxygen or just have a difficult time walking. Right. You know, to have a shuttle, pick them up at their vehicle, bring them to the hospital, say they forgot something in their vehicle, take them back. Sure. You know, it's just a wonderful thing that the volunteers are for doing. Sure. And, you know, for the sake of their health and, and, and weather-wise too, you know, at yes. those inclement days, then the, you don't have to be as concerned about making that little... Exactly. Journey. The shuttles are covered and they're heated. So come snow, they have nice protection and heat and warmth and come the rain they don't have to get wet right. so it is wonderful I met a, a, a group of the, the ladies lady volunteers and they said they wish they had blue uh, uh, little smocks on. Yeah. well we're looking at new ones the Shannon yeah. Courtney who's the volunteer coordinator and Nina Woods who's the manager over them they're looking <laughs> at updating and making more modern well, color yeah. and designs for their know, Some of us men folk, we didn't worry about <laughs> wearing pink either, you know. <laughs> yes, well, you might, instead of blue vest, you might have something different coming soon. I ain't wearing a pink vest. Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of Real <laughs> men wear pink now. <laughs> <laughs> I did when I was a teenager. Did White you? Pink. I thought it was a nice Good. color. I, I, but I've noticed that there's, there's no, um, no disparity uh, in, in, in what people do when it's required in the particular area that, that I volunteer in. Uh, everybody does the exact same thing, basically. Um, if there's uh, a patient, a particularly large statue, I notice the women turn away when it's time to push them in the, in the, uh, <laughs> in the wheelchairs. No, not really, but we all do. Um, the same thing. A lady put her hand on my shoulder and said, no, I'll get some new rest. I, I, I've done that it's three or four times, you know, and, and I accept. It's congenial. It's, mm -hmm. it's warm. It's, and the people who actually do those jobs, not just where I, where I volunteer, but in other areas, I've heard as volunteers left them saying, thank you for helping us. Thank you so much for your help. They're appreciative. Yes, all the departments, and I must say everyone at Lourdes appreciates the volunteers that are there. Because like I said, the hours that they put in just in one year alone, I guess I mentioned how many hours last year, it's incredible. And I'm um, talking about the strengths and different things. You know, the age is a big diversity with our volunteers. They can start at 21, and our oldest volunteer that we currently have is 93. So it's just wonderful to see that wow. diversity in age alone. Mm -hmm. I encountered, a, um, um, was surprised to see a, a, a lady that I know, maybe my age or, or better, and um, spoke to her and, and congratulated her on being a volunteer. Her daughter sat across from her and she said, I hadn't really thought about it, but one day my daughter said, oh, mom, come on, you know, uh, you, you know do this for something mm -hmm. to do. And how happy she was that she, that she came on as, as a volunteer. It's a wonderful program. It's, it is. It's, it's a wonderful program. We uh, also have the teen volunteers, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. just a refreshing addition because you have the youth giving back of their time. Um, they come during summer breaks, you know, fall or spring break. 
So it's just great to see the youth also being involved and the teen volunteers start at 14. Okay. Um, someone who wants to do this, what do they do? They can stop in at Lourdes and they can ask at their information desk, one of our wonderful volunteers, where the volunteer office is. They can go in person, fill out an application. Um, they can call Lourdes and be transferred to the volunteer office and we can mail one to them. So the first step is filling out an application, whether they are a teen volunteer or an auxiliary. Mm -hmm. And then we take it from there. Right. Everyone has to go through orientation in the facility as well as having a TB skin test. Right. Uh, your job is obviously a salary job. Now, how do we get to there, you know? If we, <laughs> if <you want> See, <laughs> now the volunteers, their salary cannot be measured. <laughs> that's that like that. That's, that's pretty cool. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having for me on the show. Your, 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 your willingness to come. Um, um, you're a wonderful guest. And I appreciate uh, the information that you've given. And, 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 and want to invite anyone that wants to, to volunteer to, Definitely. To, to come over and, 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 and join that wonderful, wonderful program that you have. Well, thank thank you. you again so much for coming. Thank you. For Minority Focus, I'm Jimmy Moore.